All right, so heading over to the right side panel, we're going to do the same thing and cover each panel one at a time, starting with the histogram. And the histogram is just like any histogram that you'd see on the back of your camera or loading up into Photoshop everywhere. It's the exact same thing, just showing the luminosity levels of your uh, reds, greens, and blues. So if you use histogram, it, it can be useful. Um, I personally don't really look at my histogram that much. I look kind of more by eye and just see what looks correct to me. It'll also show you some details, though, as far as the, uh, the settings. So it'll show you the ISO, what uh, focal length you're at, as well as your aperture and your shutter speed. So that's pretty basic on that side. Let's go down to the Quick Develop panel. Now in Quick Develop, we have some options here. It's kind of like a miniaturized version of the Develop uh, module itself but it's very very minimalized so we have presets that we can select from and these are these will pull from the Lightroom presets as well as from you know whatever uh, presets that you set up so I'm gonna expand this to loop view by hitting E and we can kind of apply some of these and just take a look at it so these are the ones that come in Lightroom um, there's some decent ones in there but you're going to have to kind of filter it out and see what you guys actually like. A lot of them are probably just going to be kind of throwaways, but there's a lot of different goodies in there. You can kind of test these out. So we can apply these presets directly from the library module. And we'll leave it like that because that looks ridiculous and I like ridiculous. Okay, and then we can go down to the white balance. We can also, we can set the white balance to uh, whatever these presets are as far as as shot, um, automatic, daylight, cloudy, and each one is just a different preset. So it's going to be daylight 5500, cloudy 6500, um, or somewhere in that range. So if I leave it as shot, it's going to be whatever the camera told it. We can also adjust the white balance by adjusting right here with our temperature. The small arrows are small adjustments, and the larger double arrows are going to be larger adjustments. You can see that there's not a lot of control here, which is why we really don't do too much developing in the library module unless you have some additional set of keys like RPG keys or Modiboto that can control the, uh, the, the temperature from the Lightroom library module specifically, like have a good control over it. Otherwise, you're better off being in developer. You can kind of make micro adjustments and know exactly what you're doing. But yeah, if I click on this, it'll go, it'll go cooler by large adjustments. If I click to the right, it's going to go warmer by small adjustments. Same if I click to the right with this, it's going to go really large adjustments. And again, I want to do ridiculous over the top because that's just me. So here we go. All right, so tint is going to do the same thing. We're going to control tint on this side. On the left side, we're going more green. On the right side, we're going more magenta. And if you forget, just bring your mouse over and the tooltip will tell you. Tint more green, tint more magenta, small adjustment, large adjustment. Okay, now for the tone control, we have this button auto tone. Now, auto tone is basically going to allow Lightroom to try and guess how this image should be processed. It's going to guess the exposure, the recovery, the fill light blacks, everything. So if I click that, I get this awesomely finished image right here. Actually, it's not awesome and it's not finished. I typically don't use auto tone because it does exactly this. It doesn't guess correctly, um, and so it's not really that useful. We have our exposure controls, recovery controls, fill light. We're going to go over each of these settings in detail as far as what they all do when we get to develop module. Um, blacks, brightness, contrast, clarity, and vibrance. Again, each one has small adjustments and large adjustments down and up. We can reset everything by clicking this reset all button, which I do want to do now because I don't want to completely mess up my image. And uh, we're back to our normal image. So let's go to the next panel. And expand this now in keyword and we can actually enter our own keyword tags. You won't see it right now because I actually don't have this expanded. So I'm going to click this arrow right here um, and it expands the keyword uh, slot. So I can actually apply a keyword to this. So I can say birds and I can apply, let's say I have multiple pictures of birds, I can apply keywords to all those that are birds. Um, I go to this one and I type in, uh, I took this picture in China so I'm going to type in China trip. Um, this is Ragnar. It actually already has the Ragnar keyword from the import. So we can add all the different keyword tags. Once we add keyword tags, I think this one was actually in... Actually, I can't remember. This one was shot by Chris. We'll just say Chapel. Okay. Once you guys add these keywords, it's going to provide keyword suggestions based on previously entered keywords. So if I want to add a keyword to any photo, I can just click on uh, on this image. Now this obviously wasn't the China trip, but I'm just going to apply some keywords to it by selecting these keyword suggestions that we previously set. So now we've applied these keywords and we can filter by keywords. And we'll show you guys extensively how to filter by keywords. But basically, here's a simple way of doing it. And there's actually, again, there's multiple ways of doing everything. So here's a basic way. If I click the keyword list, it'll show me all the different keywords that I have applied to my images. 
Well, if I click this chapel arrow button right here, it's going to take me to all the images that have the chapel keyword. If I click best, it'll take me to all the images that are marked with the best keyword. Birds, same thing there. If I click the arrow to the left, it's actually going to remove the keyword. So if I click that, now there's no images in the birds keyword list. Okay, so on the right side you're clicking to filter by that keyword, on the left side you're clicking to remove the keyword from those images. You can also type in if you want to filter by a specific name there. If you have a huge list then it may make sense to type in the actual name you want to filter by because uh, it's easier than you know going and trying to find it in the list. Okay, so let's shrink keywording and the keyword lists and let's go to metadata. Now in our metadata we have, you guys should probably know what metadata is by now, it's all the information that's stored within that raw file. So we can see, by clicking on this menu right here, we can see all the different metadata, whoops, let me go back to it. We can see all the different metadata options that we have available by clicking right here. So we can see the default metadata, which just kind of shows you a quick glimpse of every little important bit. We can see the, uh, let's see, all plugin metadata, we can see EXIF, which is basically all the image data on how it was shot. So we can see the exposure, the focal length, the uh, exposure bias if you had any exposure compensation, the ISO speed rating, um, if you fired your flash or not, just basically all the information. The great thing is, is Lightroom lets you filter by the metadata. So if I wanted to filter by focal length, I could go and pull up the focal length on my on my catalog and I'm going to show you guys how to do this and I could sort by all the images that are shot at 100 millimeters or I can sort by ISO and sort and see all the images that were shot at 800 ISO so from this list we can not only see the metadata we can also enter an additional metadata some of the common metadata is in your like IPTC you have basically your contact information your content image details um, you can enter in copyright information all that good stuff here Okay, and we showed you guys when we imported this, we actually entered it in stuff, so that's why it's actually filled in right now. All right, so that's the metadata panel, and then we also have comments. And we showed you guys kind of how the comment section works. This is really, it's only with published services that you're going to be using this comments option. But basically with, like, photos that go into our Flickr stream, if I click this photo, I can actually see all the comments that are, that were added to Flickr right here inside of Lightroom. And so I can also add comments. So I can see, okay, if John Doe says something about this image, I can see it right there. And I can say, thanks for the comment, John Doe, except I assume that you guys can spell better than I can. All right, I hit enter and it'll automatically update that. So you can see it downloaded it and it now updated it to um, Flickr. And if I pull up Flickr right now, which I actually showed you guys how to do the published services already, I'm not going to pull it up again, but that, that comment that is added on there is added to the actual Flickr account. So it's a really cool feature you guys can use to uh, control commenting from Lightroom. Alright guys, so that's the right panel. We've gone over to the left and the right now. Let's go over some of the other panels now in the library module, including the toolbar and the film strip, and then we're going to get on to workflow and how to actually organize our files.